Hey guys, so today I wanted to do a story time video. So I, I know I did a labor and delivery vlog, but now I want to do a labor, labor, <laughs> now I wanted to do a labor and delivery story time and just kind of go more into detail with everything because I didn't really show you that much in that vlog just because everything was happening so fast and they had a very strict like videography and photography policy. So I didn't get to like film as much as I wanted to. So today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about being induced because it is not fun. It is not a good time. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I got induced on Wednesday, which was October 9th, and I had to be at the hospital at 10.30 p.m. at night. So I went in at 10.30. Um, basically, I had to wait. You know, they had to get my room ready. So once my room and everything was ready, they brought me up to the labor and delivery floor and you know, basically told me to get settled and to put on my little hospital nightgown. Um, so they told me to get dressed and everything. So I did. And then I had to wait like another 20 ish minutes for the nurse to come back. And then once she did come back, we went over a ton of paperwork. She explained everything very thoroughly and I had to sign and date a bunch of stuff. So that took a good like hour, hour and a half. So by the time the paperwork was done, it was 12.30. So at around 12.30, that is when they gave me Cervidil. So Cervidil is basically, it's a little very small pill <laughs> that they stick up inside your cervix to kind of help ripen it, to dilate you. Um, and it is very uncomfortable. So they have to get like way up in you to insert that little tiny pill into your cervix and they have to make sure that it doesn't fall back down and it is so uncomfortable like I can't even tell you it was honestly a little bit painful too but yeah she did that and she was basically like get some rest um this could take like four hours or so to kind of see if it ripens your cervix so I'll come back in a couple hours and check you so I tried to fall asleep I really couldn't I just People kept coming in and out and checking my blood pressure and basically when you're at the hospital you're not going to get any sleep so don't expect to get sleep. So a couple hours went by and she comes back in and she has to check my cervix. <clears throat> so she has to stick her hands up in me and feel my cervix to see if I'm dilated. So she did that and unfortunately I did not dilate at all. I was the exact same. So they had to give me another dose of Cervidil. So she had to do the same exact thing. Just go right up in there. We had to do the same thing twice. And I had to wait another couple hours to see if it was working. And <clears throat> so she came back in a couple hours. I think by the time she came back, it was like 8 in the morning or something. She checked me again and I was at 2 centimeters. So it worked. Hallelujah, because I did not want to have to go through that again. I kept thinking, oh my gosh, am I going to have to have a C-section? But luckily it worked and I was at two centimeters. So that means that once I was at two centimeters, they could start the Pitocin, which the Pitocin is kind of what puts you into labor and gets things like really going. So they gave me the Pitocin at around eight or 9 a.m. So then I just kind of had to wait. So I just kind of ate and watched TV, got on my phone. I mean, a nurse was coming in. It seemed like every hour to check my cervix, to check my blood pressure, my heart rate, just everything. It just, you get no time to just relax or do anything because people are constantly coming in and out of your room. So eventually my doctor comes in and she checks my cervix too, along with everyone else in the hospital and yeah she checked it and she was like eh you're not really to the point where we need to like break your water or anything I'll come back in a couple hours so she came back in a couple hours and checked and I was farther along so she broke my water and that is when things like really started speeding up after my water broke so this was probably around like noon now so yeah 12 p.m. My water broke and contractions are kind of slowly starting to kick in. It wasn't too bad. Um, so time went by and, you know, people were just coming in my room still, coming to check on me, coming to check my cervix. And I would say around like three or four, 
that's when my contractions really started kicking in. And they were like, if you want an epidural, you know, just let us know. You know, you don't even have to start feeling your contractions to have an epidural. You can, you know, get one now, get one later, or not get one at all. And I was like, mm, you know, I'm okay right now. Like, I think I was at like three centimeters and three centimeters. It wasn't bad. It was uncomfortable. The contractions, I mean, they felt like period cramps, but I could, I could handle them. So I was like, uh, I'm fine right now. So they're like, yeah, let us know when you want it because it's going to take the anesthesiologist like 30 minutes to get here and to give it to you. So I was like, okay. So <laughs> time went by. Now it's like, I don't know, close to four. And I was dilated to like four centimeters. I was between four and five centimeters and it the pain was really, really starting to get strong in like my abdominal region. I could really feel the contractions and I was trying to breathe it out and just relax. And that's when I was just like, I need the epidural. So I called in a nurse and I was like, please get me the epidural. <laughs> it wasn't to the point where I was like screaming or anything, but I definitely just had to like breathe it out and just tell myself that it's gonna pass. The epidural will be here soon. Be here soon. <laughs> I can't talk. It was probably an hour and a half until the anesthesiologist came in, um, which I was kind of pissed about because I was like, I thought it would only took a half hour, but it took way longer than that. So she comes in, she has my husband leave the room, which I don't know why they did that. I don't know why he couldn't stay in there, but so my husband left the room and yeah, it, an epidural is not fun. They have you sit on like the end of the bed, hunched over. She gave me a pillow to hold on to. You're still having contractions while she's trying to numb you. And it is like the worst pain ever. <laughs> it is not fun. So you don't actually feel the needle with the epidural, but you do feel the needle that numbs you and that hurts. Um, I, I could feel that going in and as soon as she was putting it in, I was having a contraction. The nurse was like, just breathe, just breathe. It'll be okay. And I was like in so much pain. So it took a couple minutes and finally, you know, I had started to feel my contractions less and less, which I was like, hallelujah. So the way that hospital did it was they gave you like a little like button thing that was connected to like your epidural bag and like when you needed more you press this button like every 15 minutes and it would give you more pain medicine um to help you not feel anything so like every 15 minutes i like, kept pressing it but um so after i got the epidural she had me lay back down and that's when i started feeling sick like i was getting lightheaded I started just feeling very hot. My face started getting white. And, you know, my husband wasn't in there still. It was just me and this nurse. And she explained to me that sometimes this can be like a side effect of getting an epidural. You know, your your blood pressure drops, which is what mine did. So we had to get my blood pressure back up. She was pumping me with, you know, like an IV bag. And it was a horrible experience. It was probably 10 minutes, but it felt like, an hour like I just felt so sick I thought for sure I was gonna throw up but I held it in and after 10 minutes we finally got my blood pressure back up and everything was good I felt comfortable I still felt a little bit of my contraction so like I said I was pressing that button every 15 minutes so the next thing they did they brought my husband back in and because I had the epidural and I couldn't get up to like use the bathroom which is another thing if you want to use the bathroom poop pee whatever you have to call someone every single time that like before you get the epidural you have to call a nurse they have to walk you to the bathroom with all of your bags and everything that's attached to you because I don't know you just have to they can't like unplug everything so they have to walk you to the bathroom and I cannot tell you how many times I went to the bathroom because they're pumping you with IV. So you're getting all this fluid and that was a horrible experience because I always have to use the bathroom. So yeah, I had to use the bathroom a lot. I was constantly calling in my nurse. I'm like, I'm so sorry. She's like, no, it's fine. This, it's normal. So just remember that. Try to, try to go poop like beforehand too. Luckily I pooped 
the night before so <laughs> I was good to go in that depart department oh anyways yeah they brought my husband back into the room and like I said because I couldn't get up to use the bathroom they had to put a catheter inside of me bitch that hurt probably more than anything that I experienced because it felt like a very strong pinch inside of your vagina and it did not feel good I felt that you know I, I might not have been able to you know feel much of my legs but I felt that catheter so that was horrible mm. after I get the catheter my epidural's going you know I'm in good shape um, I'm dilating more and more I think I'm at like seven or eight centimeters but baby isn't down in the birth canal. He's not sitting low enough. So they have to like, they keep coming in and like having me change positions to try to get baby down more. At one point, you guys, they have me on all fours, right? So I'm on my hands and my knees. And keep in mind, you're in a hospital gown, butt naked underneath. So this is what I look like. They're like, lift up. They're like, put your head down and lift your butt up. So I look like that. Hold on, baby's crying. Say hello. So I just woke up from my nap. Look how cute he is. <laughs> he has lots of baby acne right now, if you can see. Um, I'm gonna give him his pacifier because we're gonna have to try to speed up the story because he's gonna get fussy. So I'm gonna hold on to him. Um, all right, so what was I saying? Oh yeah, I had to get down on all fours <laughs> with, you know, butt naked underneath, my butt's in the air, and they're, you know, rocking me and trying to, like, get this baby down into the birth canal, and eventually he gets down, thank the Lord, but that was so uncomfortable and so awkward. I had nurses all around me with my ass up in the air, um, but honestly, like, you just don't care because at this point I was like let's get this baby out I've been in labor for what seems like three days <laughs> like I'm ready to just have him here by this time we are at 10 centimeters and when she told me I was at 10 centimeters I was like oh my gosh like it's real like he's coming so what are you smiling at you little thinky you be yawning <laughs> um so yeah, the doctor rushes in and then behind the doctor is like a million nurses and they have my legs put into place, my husband by my side and the process begins. So they kind of explain to me, you know, what you're going to need to do is hold both of your legs with your arms and when we say push, pull your legs back and push. You should push like you're, you know, doing a number two and um so yeah they're like okay get ready to push so they kind of count down and then they tell me to push and then as i'm pushing they're like hold it for five seconds um so i do that and i don't know it's weird because you you can't feel like what's going on like you don't know if he's coming am i pushing is my pushing doing anything like it's hard telling so as I'm pushing, they're like, oh, you're doing a great job. I can see his head. And I'm like, what? You can see his head? Yeah, so they tell me to push. And I pushed, I think, three or four times. A total of like maybe five to ten seconds each. And that's all it took. Like, that baby was ready to come out. So they pulled him out. Um... It was honestly such a surreal experience, you know, just seeing, I mean, two seconds ago, my baby was inside of me and the next thing you know, they're pulling him out and then they're putting him on my chest for skin to skin. And I just remember when they laid him on top of me, just how, I don't know, just how in love I felt with him and just connected. And I was just so happy he was here. It was just a crazy moment, honestly. So they let me have like skin to skin with him probably for like 20 minutes or so before they took him and kind of cleaned him up and then after that you know the doctor is like sewing you up i ended up having like a first degree tear down there so she had to sew me up a little bit and then 
yeah, after you have the baby, it is smooth sailing. <laughs> like, ugh, it is so much better like once you have your baby because then people aren't bugging you as much. They don't have to stick their fingers up in you anymore. They kind of just give you a little bit of break. They check in on you every once in a while. Obviously check in on the baby, make sure everything's okay. But yeah, then you just have that time to just kind of connect with your baby. Like at the hospital I delivered at, they didn't take the baby into like a separate like nursery and have them spend the night there. The baby spent the night with me and my husband in our room. So we didn't get a chance to like kind of have a break, but that's okay. Cause you know, I wanted him in there, so it worked out. Look how cute he is. <laughs> that's my experience with being induced, and that's kind of the details of my labor and delivery vlog. It sucks. Like, I'm not even going to, like, sugarcoat it. It is not a fun experience, and it's very exhausting, both mentally and physically. Um, I was there for three nights because they thought my baby had jaundice, so they wanted to monitor him. Um, and that was honestly, you guys, the longest three nights of my entire life. So anyways, I just kind of wanted to tell you guys my story and hopefully that gives you a little perspective as to kind of what to expect if you are being induced. You know, hopefully there's not any surprises. Hopefully things go smoothly for you too. Um, but yeah, so... That's it. That's all I wanted to share today. <laughs> Say bye, sleepy. Mwah. Bye, guys. <laughs>